Hey, good day guys. Uh, today I want to talk about in terms of CFA level 2. Topic of discussion is going to be quants. Uh, when you talk about quants, it's going to be the foundation uh, of the, pretty much the whole CFA level 2, except for ethics, of course. Um, so let's take a look on, in terms of what quants are, right? Uh, so, I mean, for CFA, what you're trying to do is we are trying to do a valuation. Now, in terms of to value a particular stock, a particular equity, particular security, uh, there's going to be different factors, right? There could be a factor maybe due to sales, could be due to GDP, could be due to income, could be due to business conditions, and all the other fun stuff, right? Uh, so the idea really is, can we create a model that we can go and predict the value of a particular stock, right? Uh, so that's really the basic, I mean, what kind of model can we create? Because we are trying to do some predictions. So in terms of models, right, uh, there is two types of models that you can take a look at. Uh, there's a time series model, right, uh, or you can have a cross-sectional model. So when I say time series, uh, time series means if you want to go and find out, hey, you know what, what are the sales uh, for current year? Uh, you can do it based on sales of previous year maybe sales of the years before and so on, right? So you're trying to use past sales numbers to project the current sales numbers. The other way you can do is, is cross-sectional where you are looking at a, a particular time. For example, uh, if you want to find sales current, maybe it's going to be factored in based on GDP. Maybe it's based on uh, income, consumer income, right? It could be other factors. So time series is based on using previous time series to predict the current or the future. Uh, the cross-sectional is at a, a particular time or a particular segment of time, uh, you're using to find what is the GDP, what is the income, and can we go and predict the sales numbers? All right, so these are the two kind of models that we are going to project. Uh, the other one that we want to take a look at in terms of uh, same we'll deal with models. So I talked to you about the two ones. Uh, the other one is in terms of the output that we're trying to find, the sales numbers. Does it go more in linear or is it more exponential, right? So linear means the increase is a constant dollar, right? Uh, when you talk about exponential, uh, the increase is a constant rate or so-called percentage, right? So if it's based on a constant dollar, uh, then you can do a really simple theory, y equal b naught plus b1x, right? So y is the dependent variable, and x is the known variable, which is going to be the independent variable, right? Uh, the b naught, the b naught is the slope. Sorry, the b naught is the intercept. So this is the b naught. Uh, in terms of what b1 is, b1 is the slope, right? So this slope uh, is going to be b1. When you talk about exponential, uh, of course, you can't use a linear model because it's not a linear. Uh, what we're going to use is a log linear model. So we'll do log y, b0 plus b1x. Right, so this is the main different models. Uh, this is going to be considered as a linear trend model, right? Because it's linear in nature, right? Versus uh, a log linear trend model because it's a constant rate. So now that we know uh, there's two types of models, uh, not another important term which is going to be used in uh, quants is something called as a covariance stationary. Right now, what is covariance stationary? Covariance stationary means uh, whatever the model is, what we are trying to do is we are trying to predict the future. Right now, if the if you have models like these, I mean. It's kind of hard to really go and predict what's really going on, right? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to make every model uh, that we create to have a mean, right? So mean we usually know it by x bar, which is really the mean, uh, are also called is also the expected return. Now we know for stocks, uh, the long-term growth is tied directly to the long-term GDP. Right, so it means the stock returns is going to have similar returns as a long-term GDP. Short term it can fluctuate, yes, but over the long time frame, um, is going to be related to long-term GDP. So if we have something like this, 
uh, where you know what, in certain times the returns can be higher, could be lower, could be higher, could be lower, could be higher, lower, and so on. So these are mean rewarding levels. It means there is a mean, right? So when this, uh, when the stock goes up too high, then it actually goes back to the mean. If the stock goes too low, it has a tendency to get pulled towards the mean. So this is a mean rewarding level. So what it means for uh, for us to go and predict something, I mean, you can go and predict this, right? Definitely you can predict this. Can we go and predict these? Uh, probably not. Right, and these are kind of hard to predict where they are because there is no mean rewarding level. I mean, how are we going to know um, how is how are these going to really going to be the mean? In these ones, we know. Hey, you know what? Is it overvalued? Is it undervalued? And we know where the mean is. So that's why we want to go and create all equations uh, so that it's covariance stationary, which is there is a mean uh, a finite mean rewarding level. Right, this is the main thing. Uh, now, when, when you take a look at, so we talked about the models. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is in terms of seasonality, right? A lot of companies, uh, especially in retail sales, uh, if let's, let's say this is based on quarters, and let's say this is based on sales numbers. Uh, generally, you know what, at the end of the year or beginning of Q1, uh, let's say 2019, you usually see a bigger jump, right? Uh, the reason being is the sales might be like this for the year and then in quarter one you might see a big jump and my sales like this and then a big jump in let's say q1 2020 the reason being is there's seasonality All right, so if there's seasonality uh we're going to talk about those conditions as well right uh so the first situation is you want to go and define in terms of what kind of model are we going to use are we going to use a uh, time series or are we going to use a cross-sectional uh, and if it's, a, if it's a time series, a cross-sectional, are we going to use a linear or are we going to use a log linear trend model, right? So after we have decided, you know what, which one are we going to use, uh, now we have a model. Now what are we going to do with the model? We want to go and find out if it's covariance stationary, which means there has to be a mean defined, a mean rewarding level where the returns come back to the mean, right? Um, Okay, so now that we know that we need a covariance stationary, uh, let's take a look at the linear trend model. Right. So let's say, you know what, we have this, right? So, and we have a mean rewarding level. So this is the mean rewarding level. And this one is gonna be the, this one is gonna be the predicted value. I mean, right, so these are the mean predicted values and these are the mean. Now, what if the value is over here? What's gonna happen? The predicted value is gonna be based on something called a linear equation that we have set up, right? So we have set up a mean reverting, uh, we have set up uh, equation, so we, for every x value, we have a y, so we can predict that one. So what it means is anything over here and over here is something that we can explain, right? Anything over here and here uh, is an error because I mean, this is the part we cannot explain. This is an explained variation. So when you talk about the, the total variation in, let's say the values over here, is gonna be a combination of the error, which is something that we cannot explain, uh, versus that we can explain because that's the model that we have created. All right, so those are the variations. Uh, now, after we've decided which model we have, uh, we want to find something called as a serial correlation. So, as I mentioned, uh, there is errors over here, right? So this is the error which we cannot explain. So we want to go and see, hey, you know what, are these errors correlated? Uh, now, when you talk about errors, I mean, there can be two types of errors. That could be, you know what, we have this predicted value, and the errors are something like this. So this is homo schedastic, which means that we can actually, uh, if the errors are like this, then you know what, we can predict the errors. So based on whatever values that we have found out, uh, we know how much errors to add or subtract. Versus if there's uh, heteroscedasticity, which is gonna look like this, now, if it's gonna look like all variations, right? You see this 
versus this. This is something we can predict. So this is actually good. Uh, this is something which, uh, you know what, we cannot predict. I mean, we don't know how much the swings high are, how much the swings low are. Uh, this is actually bad for us. So we want to go and find uh, the serial correlation. Um, is there serial correlation? And if there is serial correlation, what kind of serial correlation it is? If it's a homoscedastic, you know what, it's actually good because we can actually go and determine what the highs and lows are and we can do the appropriate math. If it's heteroscedasticity, then we probably don't, uh, cannot find an answer for it. Uh, now, when you talk about regressions, right, uh, if it's a heteroscedasticity issue, right, uh, if it's a heteroscedasticity issue, uh, what you want to take a look at is uh, try to use so-called a lag model, an AR1 model. Right, so if it's a time series, let's say you know what y, uh, let's say x t is equal to b naught plus b one x t. Right, this is a time series, right? Because this is based on his own uh, previous one. Uh, we can use uh, we can use an AR one model. Right, so AR one model is nothing but uh, using AR one models to go and predict the future. So if there is if there is serial correlation, then you want to use an AR1 model. Now, how are you going to go and find serial correlation? It's going to be different. Uh, for example, if you are using uh, a time series model versus, let's say, uh, a multiple regression model, right? A time series model, I mean, the way you can see it is you, if you have something like this, x t minus 1 plus 0 t. Uh, so with the time series model, to find the serial correlation, uh, you can just find to find the error terms, right? See how are these error terms being, um, are they correlated? So you can use something called as autocorrelations to go and find out the error terms. Uh, if you have a multiple regression model, uh, for example, is yt is equal to b0 plus b1 xt. Uh, as a multi-regression model, there's something called as uh, Durbin-Watson. Right, so Durbin-Watson, this is the formula. This is something just you just have to know. Uh, Durbin-Watson is Durbin-Watson. R is the correlation. Right, so let's take a look at Durbin-Watson. What it really is. Uh, so with Durbin-Watson, what they say is there is two levels, DL, the, the lower level, the upper level, uh, anything, va any value over DU, uh, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Anything down here, uh, you actually reject the null hypothesis. So what is the null hy hypothesis? The null hypothesis is there is no serial correlation. Right. So if you fail to reject, which means there is no serial correlation, uh, and the alternative is there is serial correlation exists. Right? Uh, in most scenarios, we want to be going and trying to do the fact that, you know what, if we are going to reject, which means serial correlation exists, which is not a good thing, uh, we want to be over here where it's fail to reject, which means there is no serial correlation. Because if there is no serial correlation, it's actually a good thing. Okay, so now that we know there's an AR1 model, uh, Right now, with an AR1 model, uh, we want to go and select the serial correlation again. So we have to check. We have to check serial correlations using using the auto uh, correlation of the residuals. Right, so residuals is nothing but the errors. So we have to take a look at are the errors significant. Right. So maybe you know what? Uh, let's take a look at auto correlation. So maybe there's a lag one, lag two, lag three, lag four, and so on, right? Uh, so maybe you have you have been given the values. Uh, let's say you're given the t stat values. Uh, let's say 0 0.0002, 0 0.001, 0 0.005, and you have say 5.60. Now, if you look at autocorrelation of the errors. Um, if you do with a 95% significance, which is 95% co confident, 
this one is going to be a significant value, right? Which is uh, this is a pretty significant value because with the 95% significance uh, for any value which is greater than the critical, which critical is the 1.96. So this is this value is greater than t critical, which means we will uh, fail. We will reject the null hypothesis, which means this lag is actually pretty significant. So when you talked about, uh, remember we talked about in terms of the, uh, when I showed the graph of uh, quarter one 2019, quarter one 2020, like the, the sales value of this and then suddenly spikes up and then goes like this and then spikes up. So this is a lag, right? So what you're gonna do is if there is a lag on here, then you will just create a situation where you will have B0 plus B1 XT plus B2 XT minus four. So you will add this lag so that in the future, uh, when you do an autocorrelation, uh, this one is gonna become in insignificant. Uh, hence we use the, the lag. Okay, so we talked about uh, the serial correlation. Right. Uh, we also want to take a look at the heteroscedacity again. Uh, right. So heteroscedacity is in terms of the variance of the error terms. So we want the variance of the error terms to be constant. Right. If it's constant, right, then we can actually go and predict something versus uh, something which is like this. Uh, we cannot go and predict, right? So to go and find out, you know what? If it's um, if the error terms. Right? So for those who are trying to find out what the error term is, uh, if you find like this, uh, the error term is this, right? So we have let's say a mean over here. Uh, the error terms are over here. So these are pretty wide, right? These are error terms. Um, if the error terms exist, then we use something called as an arc one model which is auto regressive conditional hetero skedacity, right? So that's an arc one model that we're gonna use uh, to go and find uh, a particular model, right? So this is just a bit brief in terms of how we use quants to go and find out uh, which model to use and if, if the model that we're using, if there's any errors in the uh, errors in the regression models, if there's any errors, then are they serially correlated, uh, are the variables constant, and so on. Uh, if you guys like the video, uh, do like the video and subscribe. Any questions, let me know. You guys have a good one.